Hello and welcome back to another episode. I'm of course excited to dive into today's episode because we're going to be talking about breakfast, all about breakfast. And I know you've heard this a million times, but trust me, breakfast is a game changer, especially for women over 40. But what happens when you skip it? If you're the type who grabs a coffee and heads out the door, you might want to stick around for this episode. I'm going to share five delicious and balanced breakfast ideas that are going to keep your energy up all day, curb those pesky afternoon cravings, and even help you shed those stubborn pounds. And if you're wondering ever since you turned 40 how the woman looking back at you in the mirror is actually you, And if you're continuing to Google how to lose weight in your 40s and get completely overwhelmed with all the recommendations that pop up, I want you to know that you're not alone. I've been there and I know it's confusing. But after 10 years of working with clients, helping them to transform their bodies and their health after 40, I'm ready to help you too. If you want a step-by-step guide for looking and feeling like yourself again with personal recommendations for what exercises to do, what foods you should be eating, and what stressors you should be avoiding, I want you to book a free call with me. It's a limited time complimentary call where we'll spend 30 minutes together creating a roadmap designed for you so you can start building healthy habits for a better you. The link and all the information is in the show notes. I cannot wait to chat with you. Do you feel unrecognizable since hitting your 40s? Is losing those stubborn five to 10 pounds despite your best efforts a constant struggle? Are you always tired, bloated, and relying on caffeine or sugar to get you through the 3 p.m. slump? In this podcast, you're gonna find practical tools to shed weight, regain your energy, and feel like yourself again as you navigate your 40s and beyond. Hi, I'm Lara, a registered holistic nutritionist and life coach with over 10 years of experience helping women achieve their health and weight loss goals. Get ready to learn how your hormones and metabolism are shifting and be equipped with simple nutrition, exercise, and stress management tools so you can navigate peri and postmenopause with confidence and vitality. Now go grab your infused water because it's time to dive in. Okay, so now I've seen this time and time again. Many of my clients, especially women over 40, seem to be skipping breakfast and they rely on coffee to power through their mornings. It seems convenient, right? And it also, um, you know, abides, helps you abide by the intermittent fasting regulations, (laughs) guidelines that are out there. But what happens by 3 p.m.? Usually you're crashing, your energy is gone, and those cravings for sweets or salty snacks hit hard. You might find yourself reaching for whatever is handy, and by dinner time, you're consuming way, way more calories than you planned. Do you resonate with this? Does this sound familiar to you? You fast in the morning, you have a coffee, and then you are grazing and munching and craving through the day. And I guarantee you, ladies, you end up consuming way more calories than you would have had you had that balanced breakfast in the morning. Skipping breakfast simply throws off your blood sugar and really sets you up for a cycle of low energy and overeating later on in the day. Research completely backs this up. Consuming more calories at breakfast rather than at dinner can help you regulate your metabolism, it keeps your energy steady, and it prevents those late night cravings. And they've researched this. In research, having a larger breakfast than dinner is truly the way to go. Plus, 
A good breakfast should have at least 30 grams of protein, some healthy fats, and low to moderate carbohydrates to fuel you properly through the day. So let me share a quick story about one of my clients, Mary. Mary used to skip breakfast. She would have a large coffee. Sometimes she would have cream. Sometimes she would have whipping cream in it, but she'd have a large coffee and she'd feel fine at first. She would tell me, oh, I'm not hungry. But by the afternoon, she was sluggish, of course. She'd be looking for something sugary um, and she wasn't sleeping well at night. And of course, she was frustrated with her weight gain, especially since she was really, really trying hard to eat healthy, especially at dinner. So we switched things up by incorporating a balanced breakfast um, that followed my balanced meal formula. It's high protein, some healthy fats, moderate carbohydrates. I like to keep this balance for breakfast, you know, high protein, some fat, and lower to moderate carbs. And when she started to do this, after a few weeks, she noticed a huge, huge, huge difference. Her first thing she noticed, it's always what what <laughs> the women I work with notice, her energy levels skyrocketed and they were stable throughout the day. Her cravings for sweets magically vanished. And of course, she started to losing weight without even trying. So I have phases that I take clients through. So this wasn't even the weight loss phase. It was, you know, the initial phase of just balancing things out and helping her to be healthier, have a healthier body, health, have a healthier metabolic rate. But she started to even see weight loss during this phase. And guess what? She started sleeping better too. So, you know, this isn't just things that I'm telling you. These are tried and true. And everything that I get my clients to do are well supported with research. Because, you know, it's nice to have data back up. Not everything you do could be researched and some research is flawed, but it's nice to have some evidence that the things that you're doing are actually, you know, could work in a clinical setting. So let's dive into what you can have for breakfast. So here are some five very simple and delicious ideas. Okay, so the first one is a smoothie. I'll tell you, this is my favorite way of having breakfast, especially during the week because weekdays are busy. And for me, smoothies are super duper easy. So you just gotta make sure that it's protein packed, okay? So I like to use, um, I have leafy greens in there. Um, so here's my, my current recipe. So I have protein powder. I use a combination of whey protein as well as pumpkin protein. I have hemp hearts, chia seeds, zucchini. It's in season and I like zucchini. It makes it sweet without um, packing up the carbohydrates. Um, and then I use some blanched kale. And um, sometimes I'll put a peach in there and peaches are in season right now. I love kefir in my smoothie. It makes it taste yogurty. So I'll have that or I'll skip the fruit and I'll put cocoa powder um, and I will have a chocolate smoothie. I really, really love my smoothie. Like I actually, I went on the way on vacation and I came back and I was like looking forward to having my smoothie. So there, that, that's just me. Um, oh, I also add, like to add a little bit more fat to it. So my breakfast is high protein, high fat. Um, I'll put almond butter or half an avocado in there. And it keeps me full for hours. I'm not kidding, for hours. Another option is to have an omelet. We all have eggs in our fit, fridge. So whip up an omelet with eggs. You know, I like to add spinach and peppers, a little bit of cheese. And I like to have mine with um, a whole grain um, sprouted, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, sourdough bread. Um, and maybe some avocado slices. And it's a great way to have, you know, a balance of fats, protein, and some carbohydrates. So this one, because of the slice of sourdough bread, it might be a little bit higher in carbs, but it's fine because it's sourdough. It actually helps with blood sugar stability. So we're good. So unless you're adding enough 
um, dairy, like cheese in it, cottage cheese, feta. Oh, I love feta in my scram egg scramble. You might, if you're gonna skip the dairy, you might wanna add some egg whites to it to make sure that you have enough protein because three eggs only gives you 21 grams of protein. So you're gonna need to add a little bit, either egg whites or some additional cheese in order to up the, uh, the protein in that omelet. I love chia puddings. Um, you can prepare it the night before. You could grab and go in the in the morning. So an overnight chia pudding. I like you're basically mixing chia seeds with some sort of um, blended um, yogurt, kefir. There's tons of recipes out there. You just have to make sure it's enough protein because a lot of them out there are yes, absolutely delicious, but carb heavy and not enough protein. So just make sure, I make mine with a little bit of whey protein powder and it's delicious. You do have to remember, if you do use whey protein, it's totally fine. You just have to add things to it. You have to add fiber and you have to add fat to it and that will help stabilize your blood sugar because whey protein on its, its own has been researched to spike your blood sugar levels. Another easy one is a Greek yogurt bowl. So you grab some Greek yogurt, unsweetened preferably, some nuts, a sprinkle of granola, maybe some fresh fruit. And I like to stir in some healthy fats like some almond butter or some organic peanut butter. And it's so creamy and delicious and oh yes, so good, yogurt bowl. And another one is protein pancakes. Yes, you can have pancakes. Um, they actually sell pre-made. Some of the packages are actually fine, um, high protein pancakes, but you can easily whip it up yourself. Within a couple of minutes, I was addicted to these protein pancakes. For a while, I was having it like all the time and I was even having it for dinner. Um, and it's delicious, low carb, and keeps you full for a long, long time. So these are my five ideas, smoothie, omelet, overnight chia pudding, yogurt bowl, as well as protein pancakes. But you guys, you can have dinner for breakfast if you want. Just make sure that it's well balanced. It's got protein, it's got fat, and it has moderate carbohydrates because a high carbohydrate breakfast is a sure, sure way to make sure that your blood sugar is dysregulated for the entire day. So. Keep it low carb, especially at breakfast, and you will absolutely benefit. Thank you for listening. Join me each Wednesday and Friday for a fresh episode of the Mastery Metabolism Over 40 podcast. And if you're looking for additional resources to help you navigate this peri and postmenopausal journey, head to nutritionherway.com for free recipes, resources, and a supportive community of women going through this journey just like you. And if you found this episode helpful, others will too. I would love, love, love it if you can leave a podcast review. It's truly the number one way you can thank me and it grows this show, getting this podcast in front of other women just like you who want to learn how to navigate this peri and postmenopausal journey. Signing off in love and health.